this episode of Ice Pilots and WT. I hear about it once more. Tempers boil over as Buffalo readies the Electra for a big job. I want the chief pilot in my office right now. Jeremy's flying chops get put to the test in front of the boss. Giant pile of stress. And the Electra flight crew gets lost in a whiteout north of the Arctic Circle. We're flying blind. Oh, ah. Springtime in Yellowknife. Buffalo Chief Pilot Arnie Schrader returns from his stint in Turkey. He's happy to be home and see his wife Janet again. But it's back to work immediately. <laughs> Buffalo has landed a hefty contract. They need to haul diesel fuel to remote locations in Nunavut. The plane for a job this size is the turboprop Electra. It's the only one available that can do that kind of work in those kind of strips. Yeah, they're gravel airstrips, so it's got to be a, a gravel-equipped airplane. But the Electra isn't ready to go yet. I'm going to hook this up. Chief Mechanic Chuck Adams is finishing work on the APU. APU stands for Auxiliary Power Unit, which is AC power and air to get the thing started. This is just to get it running. The APU gives the Electra the jump start it needs to power its systems. Designed this in my head. So if I die, they're The APU is loaded onto the Electra. That there, gotta go on to that. 115 volts, 400 cycles old. To plug a vacuum cleaner into this, take off like a UFO, eh? I've seen it done. Next, installing the tanks. Back it up just to here. The Electra can carry a maximum of 12,000 liters of fuel in three onboard tanks. The contract calls for over 400,000 liters to be delivered to stations along the dew line. The dew line, or distant early warning line, was a system of long range radar stations set up during the Cold War. Starting at the northernmost tip of Alaska, it would stretch 3,000 miles across the continent to Baffin Island, opposite Greenland. The stations were designed to detect incoming missiles or planes from the Soviet Union, but that threat never appeared. By the 90s, many stations had been closed, leaving an environmental mess. Extensive cleanups are now in progress, and that's where Buffalo comes in. We were taking them uh, diesel fuel, fuel oil, to run their earth moving equipment where, where they're uh, digging up the contaminated soil. They're also digging holes and burying the garbage. And they also have a lot of heavy equipment to dismantle the buildings and the radar sites. The fuel haul contract will take weeks to complete. We've got a big job. We got like a you know half million dollar job we got to get done. One of the flight engineers prepping the Electra for this mission is Juan Tresher. I call him the flight engineer extraordinaire. Hey, flight engineer extraordinaire, that guy. Since the Electra will have to make many landings on gravel strips, the tires and brakes must be in peak condition. Well, we're gonna change this brake package. It's worn out, run out of pedal. It's bad. You're in the aircraft industry, you're not there because you want a job. You're there because you like to work on airplanes or fly airplanes or be around airplanes. Juan came to Buffalo to work on the Electra. But in the year and a half he's been here, he's only flown once. I came here because I like to fly and I like electrics. Juan's wife is Kelly Jurasevic, Buffalo's cargo manager. He hasn't been flying at all. He's just been wrenching. So well, he needs some mileage. And he's depending on that, you know, shit, that's what he's hired for. 
At home, Kelly and Juan take care of others in the Buffalo family. He has no money, I'm worried about. I know. He's got nothing in there. No furniture, no shift, no food, and he's got those kids. Let's um, go over and help him out or something. Kelly's like a mother hen here, but she and Juan are far away from their own kids in Calgary. I have gray kids, and I have an awesome granddaughter that means everything to me. How's my granddaughter? I'll let her say hi to Grandpa, see if she'll say hi to him. Hi. How you doing, Sophia? Yeah, we're going to come down. We'll come down and see you soon. Can you see ABCs yet? They never expected to be away from family so long. <laughs> it's a good, good job. But the promise of flying in the Electra has That's kept Juan really at Buffalo. This fuel haul contract is his big chance to get off the ground and into the air as the Electra flight engineer. Electra flight engineers earn additional pay when they fly, $3,000 extra for this contract. There is no story yet. What, you know if you're going? Not yet. I got groceries, though. Check out this feed bag. If he gets the green light, Juan will be ready to go. Right now, actually, uh, the crew itself is still unknown uh, who's really going. It's up to Buffalo Joe to make that decision. A meeting has been called to go over the plans for this half million dollar job. And there's just some information for you guys. Yeah. Hey, what up? Back from Turkey, Chief Pilot Arnie Schrader joins Joe and the crew. So I made a deal with the client. Safety first. Now, if the client says, come here, have a look, then the client pays. Close on your captain. All right, final say. The Electra pilots are Captain Brian Harrison and co-pilot Sean Barry. Anything to do with maintenance, truck, go to run. So that's the way that's going to work. The other way it's going to work. And then Joe drops a bomb. On this airplane, I'm going to send one flight engineer, not two. And that will either be Juan or the only other Electra flight engineer, Czech immigrant Luby Lobos. So my decision to, to send uh, Luby, I'm holding Juan behind. Juan was counting on being a flight engineer on this Electra contract. Now his pride and his wallet have taken a hit. Whatever, I'm sick of this place. I'm sick of this. Coming up. Well, wow, these rumors. Rumors throw the Buffalo staff into turmoil. They're politicking and, and gossiping and cause me problems. And Joe tries to put a stop to it. Shut those fing hangar doors right now. They should have to come in here on Sundays, too. What did we do that time? 70,000 pounds. Me and you? Yeah. And then who got in shit? We got in shit for doing it. Yeah. Well, it had to be done. In the Buffalo Airways cargo terminal, Kelly Jurasovic is getting squeezed by management. So can we, like, figure out setting the ramp has got to be here? Uh, so this is where we got to sit down and write it all out, because it's very... Mikey is cracking down on her staffing like, levels. Like, say for a Sunday, who do you usually have? Yourself, Janelle, Gail, Uncle Jack, Al, and Steve? Oh. Six, do you need six people for it? It's been working fine. But convincing Mikey isn't the issue. When Kelly's worried about Joe. Because we don't have enough help. And then if I don't have enough help, then what am I supposed to do? Then I phone over there, oh, we don't have anybody. So then the plane's going to be late, and then your dad's going to bitch, why the is the plane late? Well, because I don't have enough help. Why didn't you ask for help? I mean, this whole thing yeah. happens all the time. If the plane doesn't leave, like I said, till noon, do not blame us. Okay? Mm -hmm. If that works for you. And Kelly has more than her staff problems on her mind. Her husband, flight engineer Juan Tresher, has been told that he's not part of the electric crew on the fuel shuttle to Nunavut. Instead, Luby Lobos from the Czech Republic will be the flight engineer. And that's a lot of money out of Juan's pocket. He was hired here to fly that aircraft. And, you know, it's bullshit that he's not on the, on the frickin' plane. Everybody's pissed about it. Yo, Juan's... Uh, I thought they were, I was happy taking both of them. So one can do a little bit and the other can do a little yeah. bit. People around the hangar are criticizing Joe's decision. He wants to send four. 
and everyone else is trying to push for five, which makes them really mad. Your politic and, and, and Gosby and Gosby problems. Well, how would I know who's qualified and who the f is it? Yeah, you would. I have no idea. I'm not on this f side. Joe thinks that Kelly and Arnie are the source of the gossip. So right now, we'll, uh, we'll can the bullshit right now. Those that don't like it can go on the bus. You see both of you guys? Well, these rumors, they start. And there's all kinds of shit goes on over nothing. We put a crew together and sent it out. Okay, we had a bit of a kerfluffle about because there is some friction in this company because Luby's on the airplane. That crew going out was my decision. If you guys want to gossip bullshit, gossip all you want about who should be on the airplane, who shouldn't, I can give a shit. If it doesn't stop, I hear about it once more. Joe hopes he's finally stopped the gossip. Let's stop the bullshit and get the job done. So it's back to work getting the Electra ready to go. Captain Brian Harrison and mechanic Chuck Adams make final preparations. All you have to do is just check the tire pressure style and everything. Yeah, mechanic, and we're done. Okay, let's try and get ready here in the next little while, and then we're, uh, then we're just waiting for Joel. But there's a sudden snag a rumor that Luby may not have the necessary work papers to be on the flight. So, Luby's going home? Is that what I hear? What? Oh. You never know what's going on here, day day. We do a ride on, on Luby. Like, is he certified? I have no idea. If Luby's papers aren't in order, Juan might get on the flight after all. Well, see, right now they're saying Luby's not certified. Who's saying that? Who's they? Juan brought it up to me. Shut those <laughs> and hang your doors right now. OK? We'll go straight to right now. I'm not putting up with this bullshit. Yeah. Joe has had enough of the rumors. I want that chief pot of my office right now. Well, I'll find him for you. Oh, yeah, you'll find him, all right. As Buffalo's chief pilot, Arnie is ultimately responsible for all flight crews, including making sure the work papers are up to date. Why is this crew not ready to go? You're the chief pilot. I want a fing job done. Luby is not ready to go. Why isn't he ready to go? Can okay. If we had a job too much, you guys, do that you guys, you guys go sort it out because I'm shutting the fing down. Everybody can get on the airplane so I'm gonna go home. Let's talk to Debbie and see what has to be done. Everyone waits for the brass to get to the bottom of things. Bullshit, man. See? Funny games, eh? Arnie and Electric Captain Brian Harrison meet with Buffalo Administrator Debbie McGuire in the he's office. Work permit? No, he's all legal. He's got a work permit. He's he got everything. There's no reason he can't go. I'm not the one causing the fuss, Arnie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the job's back on. We're going? Yeah. Luby's on the plane while Juan's left on the tarmac. It can't be easy seeing the Electra off, and with it, $3,000 in additional wages Juan was counting on. The Electra leaves Yellowknife for Hall Beach, 1,600 kilometers away. From there, they'll shuttle fuel to the Dew Line stations. Cruising along at 600 kilometers an hour, the Electra is the most advanced aircraft in Buffalo's fleet. This turboprop plane demands a lot from her pilots. They got a little bit more on their hands. It's faster, it's pressurized, flying higher, a lot more complicated prop system and everything else. Hey, Pop 78, please. We're not far from the airport, so. Yeah, there's open no water. Yeah. I didn't realize it was. I thought it'd still be frozen. Yeah. You got the red, you got the strip of sight, Yeah, I was just. Five. 
The Electra is also the only Buffalo aircraft with a ground proximity warning system. 100. Which kicks in as the plane approaches the Hall Beach landing strip. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Hall Beach was established in 1957 when the Dew Line Station opened here. The updated radar site is now part of the North Warning System. Other than the workers stationed here, the majority of the 700 residents of Hall Beach are Inuit, making it one of the most traditional towns in Nunavut. At the airstrip, it's time to start the fuel shuttle. We'll put 4,000 liters in the middle tank. Shut it off and then we'll put 3,500 in the back tank. From here, the Buffalo crew will fill the empty tanks on board the Electra and begin transporting fuel to stations up the dew line. Beautiful. It's like a worker. Right. Man, my good. Working? Yep. Oh, yeah, everything's ready to go but the town. Man, you think y'all nice relax. This, this place puts in the machine. We got drive in movies. You see them down there, drive in theaters. <laughs> The tanks are filled with a total of 12,000 liters of fuel. Everybody's on board? The Electra is ready to make the first of many fuel deliveries. Okay, start number one, please. They tell me that they, the weather's good. They're not actual weather reporters over there. We don't have any people that can give us real, a real official observation. So, But they say the weather's good, it's flyable. They know what we need to, uh, to get in there. They're headed to Makar Inlet, a dune line station 190 kilometers away. The crew was expecting clear skies. But it's not long before the Electra is enveloped in a blinding whiteout. The clouds white, the sides are white, the ground's white, everything's white. We're down to 1,200 or so now. Cheers, speed. Like you can't see anything. It's a, like you're flying around in a bowl of milk. You don't know if you're going up, going down. Still looking for it. The Electra's instruments indicate that they're approaching the Makar Inlet airstrip. But Brian and Sean struggle to find some visual reference. We kind of got disoriented there and didn't know where we were. They descend, hoping to punch through the fog. Suddenly, the Electra's warning system kicks in. Terrain, terrain, pull up, pull up, pull up. North of the Arctic Circle, a Buffalo Airways Electra piloted by Brian Harrison and Sean Berry, with engineers Luby Lobos and Chuck Adams on board, is caught in a whiteout. Flying blind. It's not easy work. Their instruments tell them they're descending to the airstrip in Makar Inlet, but they can't see a thing. Suddenly, an alarm oh, goes off. The Electra's ground proximity warning system three, alerts three, them three. to what they can't pull see. Up. They're too close to the hills below. Captain Brian Harrison pulls back the yoke and throttles up. Steering clear of a near collision with the rugged Arctic terrain. As they clear the clouds, they search for any sign of the runway. Start to get some slant visibility, Roger. Keep your eyes open, Sean. That's line up checks here, Luby. Roger. We're landing with all no landing aids, without no runway lights. It's hard to find until you're right on it. Finally, they spot the right valley. 
I've got the strip. Flap 78. That's our distance, Sean. We are one mile. There's a little snow on the strip there. Yeah, that's going to make it really nice. They can barely make out the gravel runway. 500. This is the ultimate in northern aviation. 50. Landing a 100,000 pound aircraft loaded with fuel on a short gravel strip in the middle of nowhere. 30. 20. 10. That's where the pilot earns his money. Let me assure you that. Brian earned his money there. They gotta clean this runway before I come back in here. These clowns here, they gotta mark this runway better, man. We don't know how wide this runway is. If it snows, we're fing doomed. I don't see a fing marking on this runway. No lead in, nothing. Brian's a little more diplomatic <laughs> with the guys running the camp. When you're coming in, the runway's very hard to see. Did you run the loader up and down? Or, or no, just pick up, pick up. Yeah, maybe. With the loader, with the loader, you can. Yeah, maybe a few more times after we leave. You, you can do that a few more times after we leave. Okay. If visibility drops any further, Brian and the electric crew won't be able to return. So you can see that the hills are actually starting to disappear here now, so it's uh, not a good sign. So they take off, quickly breaking through to sunny skies. It's back to Hall Beach to refill the onboard tanks and continue making fuel deliveries to other stations up the dew line. Back in Yellowknife, Rampy Jeremy Dow is happy to finally be working at the main Buffalo hangar. I just got to prep two airplanes as skeds. Um, got to prepare all the stuff inside, make sure they all have seats and stuff. Uh, all the seats all have everything that a sked requires. He's next in line to get checked out, to take the written and in-flight exams to start as a Buffalo co-pilot on the sked. That's Buffalo's daily DC-3 passenger flight. If he gets checked out, he would be our sked guy. That's the only thing that keeps you going at this job, is knowing that you're going to be flying something. Anything that's not sharp, don't worry about. But Jeremy's pilot dreams have hit some turbulence. OK, we're going to add that now. Cargo manager Kelly Jurasevic is solving her staffing problems. We don't have enough people right now. It's just a lot of work. By calling in rampy reinforcements. God. Oh, Kelly just uh, told me that I was going to be the, the food mail as were the exact words, I believe. Jeremy's going to have to help out whether he likes it or not. He's quite pissed about that, but I don't really give a shit. It's not like I like it, but, you know, it's a job, and that's what we got to do. Well, it wasn't tragic that I was going to be the food mail, but uh, this job's all about doing everything rather than just pilot-type duties. It's just do whatever needs to be done and make everybody happy. That's the way to go. But it's not long before Jeremy catches a major break, courtesy of Buffalo Joe's unpredictable nature. There's a DC-3 sitting on the tarmac at Buffalo's Red Deer, Alberta hangar. Yeah, my father's impatient. He wants a DC-3 back home. And uh, even though it's been there for six months, he's just picked this arbitrary day that it's super important. And Joe needs someone to fill the co-pilot seat on the flight from Red Deer to Hay River. So uh, the only guy available is Jeremy, which worked out pretty perfect because he needs the training hours. So as they're faring, they could be training. If Jeremy can impress Joe, the next Buffalo co-pilot position could be his. You don't want me to go on Saturday? No, he won't see now. Damn. I need somebody to give me the, the crash course of Joe. Oh, I'm stressed. <laughs> but impressing Joe won't be easy. Every once in a while, a guy grabs that airplane, he's 19, 20 years old, and he needs a natural. That's what we're looking for. 
The question is, does Jeremy fit that profile? Will do. Thanks. Bye. He's really got a, a situation right now that he's got to prove himself, and he's got a target on his head. It's a big opportunity. It's also a giant pile of stress. Like, God, I've, I've got to get it right, you know? Jeremy doesn't have many hours in a DC-3, and he's never landed one. But he'll have to be prepared for anything with Joe. It's like going from the minors, and then you get put right on the first line on the playoffs. Welcome to the big league. Jeremy flies commercial to Edmonton, and then drives to Buffalo's hangar in Red Deer. Well, if you impress Joe well enough, he'll say, yeah, I get that guy checked out. He can fly an airplane. Let's make that happen. So that's, that's a pretty big deal. The four and a half hour flight to Hay River is scheduled for first thing tomorrow morning. Jeremy doesn't have much time to get ready. Mm, shiny. <laughs> Positive outcome would be that he nails it. Um, negative outcome that he'll crack. Look at that, two jump seats. It was certainly nerve wracking trying to be prepared for a flight with Joe. Right, I better figure out my way around this one. Because every DC-3 is different. Coming up, an engine problem on the Electra forces a sudden change of plans. Listen to this. She's poof, buddy. It's morning in Red Deer, Alberta. Rookie pilot Jeremy Dow is ready to take center stage. Oh, I'm just heading over to the terminal to do the weather, get all the uh, weather and the information for our flight today, figure out what the best altitude for winds are and the quickest way to get there. He's feeling confident about his upcoming training flight with the boss, Buffalo Joe McBrien. I figured I knew enough to get through the flight and I was as prepared as I could be. But the forecast is not in Jeremy's favor. So uh, just we've gone from an 8,000 foot ceiling to a 1,500 foot ceiling in the last hour and a half. That's a bit bigger of a deal. So much for this being a run of the mill easy flight. And that only adds to the pressure Jeremy's already feeling. His future as a Buffalo Airways co-pilot is riding on this flight with Joe. Going to be looking at a fair bit of turbulence thanks to some uh, developing thunderstorms pretty much the entire way. It's going to be bumpy. And there's more. We got, uh, looks like icing to Edmonton, uh, through Edmonton now. Oh, and uh, to 15,000, freezing up to 15,000. Are you scared? Not in the least. Oh, nice. Don't worry about it. <laughs> No, but water in the wings. that's right. <laughs> I was a little nervous, I'll admit, because yeah, it was going to be a workout and I knew it. It was going to be a lot more stuff having to think about. And you know that you're going to be copying the clearance. Roger. As they taxi out, Joe doesn't waste any time testing the rookie. You know the number? Yes, sir. Where's their initial heading? Uh, 336, I believe. 336 is their initial heading. Roger. Straight to here, River. They're on their way from Red Deer, Alberta to Hay River Northwest Territories, 1,000 kilometers away. You gotta learn to sit back, relax, enjoy the flight. Easier said than done. Jeremy's only had a handful of short training flights in a DC-3. He wants to take a look at me to make sure that I'm good enough to fly his airplanes, at least as a, as a Kojo. It's a lot of pressure for a 21-year-old. He's got to show Joe he has the right stuff. Give me your, uh, give me your map, sir. There's Alberta. I mean, a map like MAP, this is a low and root chart. No, I don't have a uh, VNC stick. A VNC is a visual navigation chart that shows aviation information superimposed on a ground map. No, I need a map, and so you can see the ground that's on the map. I was like, oh yeah, he wants a, that map, right. <laughs> Just kind of Joe tries the onboard GPS. If this is navigating for the tall, that's why I need a map, eh? I don't even know what the winds are up there. On the flight, I didn't have the right maps with me, and I didn't have the right weather with me. I thought you guys had a better hat on schooling than that. No, no, I know better. It's just I didn't do it. It's my bad. I got angry at me. It certainly wasn't as angry as he has been with me before. 
Jeremy's not off to a great start. As the DC-3 is struck by turbulence, he gets another chance to prove his merit. I was putting a fair bit of muscle and effort into flying that thing around. Well, well. Just fighting with a damned airplane, trying to keep it going in the same direction it was before. Then, just as forecast, they encounter icing. Ice buildup on the wings can severely affect the plane's lift. Joe leaves Jeremy to deal with this problem, a true test of his flying acumen. Cross-checking all the time. Air cross-checking. We Jeremy takes the DC-3 to a lower altitude to escape the icing. The move works. They descend out of the clouds and the icing. Jeremy has worked his way through the ranks to reach this opportunity. Now, as they close in on Hay River, Joe has one more challenge for him. Oh yeah, I want you to take over here. Jeremy is going to bring the plane down in Hay River. He recently landed the much bigger DC-4, but he didn't have the boss breathing down his neck. Now go over and get in the center line of the runway. Sir. Oh yeah, I got right through, let's go right on down. Right. Right. They're on the control. I want to make sure your heels are on the floor so you don't touch your brake. Use your feet. See this? Yeah. I got my feet. See that? I like a pedal car. Remember your little kid you had a pedal car? You went like this? Yep, same thing. If Jeremy can nail this landing, it will leave a lasting impression with Joe. It's all come down to this moment. Power back. And you're just gonna hold it right there. You're just gonna hold it right there. See that? Is that right? Then, one final test. He's gonna land the main one. Let's see what you do with the tail. Jeremy brings the DC-3 in like a pro. All the months slogging it out on the ramp. I love my job, I love my job, I love my job, I love my job. In freezing temperatures, I love my job. For crappy pay. I love my job. I love my job. I love my job. Will have been worth it if it means Jeremy will soon become Buffalo's next co-pilot. Good fun. I like my job. I like my job a lot. This time he means it, but did he impress Joe? It was a good trip. Nice trip. Yeah. Well done. Don't tell him that. Then they want pay and shit like that. It was good to see that he uh he wasn't too unhappy with my performance. I'm sure if I screwed up miserably when I was flying with Joe, there wouldn't be a, uh, a checkout, uh, a flight test in my future, or near future anyways, so. Yeah, doing well on that flight was sort of the last, uh, one of the final hurdles. 40. Back in Hall Beach, the base for Buffalo's fuel delivery, the crew continues transporting diesel up the dew line. I'm gonna go sit in my cage now. Captain Brian Harrison and co-pilot Sean Barry are ready to fly. Instead of going to Macari Inlet this evening, we're gonna go to Dewar Lakes. Uh, first trip into there, we're bringing uh, 11,000 liters of fuel, and uh, we'll go check it out. Flight engineer Luby Lobos checks the Electra's fuel level. They're set to go. But there's a snag. Four engines a little bit. An engine problem at a distant location is something you can't plan for. You can't, you gotta deal with it once you get here, right? It's like when uh, Neil Armstrong went to the movie, you think he had it all planned before he got there? I don't think so. We didn't want to go into Dewar's Lakes and have this engine fail on us on the ground because that's what happens. Usually once you shut it down and try and start again, you can't get it going. 
Oh, we've got a problem with our number four engine. We've got to take the airplane home in order to get it fixed. So that's what we're doing right now. Oh, engine problems. Get your shit together, buddy, because we're going home. Better off to get airborne, take it back to Yellowknife, change the engine, and finish the job. Let's get that one off. Get it, just leave it hanging off that crane. Chuck gives Juan a heads up. They'll be coming back to Yellowknife for an engine repair. See what you can do. OK. Bye. Juan sprints into action. He's only got a few hours to prep a good engine before the Electra arrives from Hall Beach. But he's about to hit an obstacle. Joe. Coming up, problems with the replacement engine. And Joe blows a gasket. You guys just f me around. I'm not f***ing anybody around, Joe, OK? The Electra crew is heading back to Buffalo for an engine replacement. They take off. They'll be in Yellowknife in less than four hours. This detour is a setback for Joe. One that could trim as much as $50,000 off the profit margin. The old man, once he knew the plane was coming home, he wasn't in the best of moods, of course. Oh, well, everybody got it bad that day. It was just, Listen. yeah, everybody even. Probably just someone who took his order for lunch probably would got in trouble that day, too. Juan still smarting from Joe's decision not to include him on the Hall Beach contract, but he's a professional. The faster the aircraft gets back to doing that job, the better off it is. The spare Electra engine in the hangar is missing some parts. But Buffalo's other Electra has four good engines on it. It's just easier and faster to take the whole QEC, quick engine change unit, off the whole other aircraft, throw it on the aircraft that has the problem. There's not enough parts for that. I don't know. But Joe what? doesn't That's think so. Body gearbox, the turbine, and they say we don't have enough parts. Well, I'll show you what's missing. You know, he's, he's got a big knot in his face because his engine that was supposed to be a spare is sitting on the floor. Joe expects the spare engine to be used for the repair, but for months, the mechanics have been poaching it for parts. What do you want me to do? There's, no, there's not enough parts for that. So and all, the hours, all the hours you're going to spend putting that air engine on and taking it off to waste of time. It's sitting on the floor in pieces. Looks like a big pile of bolts. You guys just around. I'm not f***ing anybody around, Joe, okay? I don't take this well, thing you, apart. I ask you, you say talk to Booby or Chuck. I don't know. Well, what I'm not the one that took the f***ing thing apart. Well, you guys better have an answer for me tomorrow to treat you, you know, because I'm getting pissed off. You know, I, I have got a temper when it comes to dealing with assholes. You know, you want to be an asshole, I can deal with that, and I'll be an asshole right back. I'm tired of getting shit on for not f***ing no reason. Juan's ready to walk, but he knows there's a crew flying in. And they're counting on his help. The sooner the aircraft's back in service, the sooner it's gone back to finish its job. So it's, you got to get the job done. You can't lollygag around, right? Straight. How far into you? All the way. Back from Turkey, Corey Dodd and Arnie Schrader lend a hand. Those things don't turn, eh, so? Juan's taking the high road despite his clash with Joe. Because that's my job and that's what I do. You know, I've done it for 30 years, so I'll keep doing it for another 10. Maybe not here. By the time the 2,000 pound engine is removed, the Hall Beach Electra crew returns. They need a fast turnaround or Joe will hit the roof. Listen to this. Listen. She's boost, buddy. How's Joe taking all this? Oh, he's pissed. Well, too bad. We gotta come back. I'm not gonna die for that shit.
By the end of the day, the swapped out engine is in place. The next morning, the Electra is ready to head back to Hall Beach and continue the fuel haul up the dew line. Hey, look out, buddy. There's a friggin' lunatic on the loose, man. How's my air? Anything out of place? The engine's all changed over, and uh, we're, uh, we're on the way. Juan got the job done, but as the Electra takes off, he has a decision to make. I came here to be a flight engineer, not Joe's You know, but Joe likes to have everybody under his thumb. And then... I quit. I just had enough of this shit. He had an issue with me, and I had an issue with him, and he elected to, to quit, and that's fine with me. I don't like being yelled at. 50 years old, and I'm not one of his kids. At the end of the day, Juan's wife, Kelly, finds out. Well, Juan, I phoned him because I was finished work early. And so I asked him if I could have a ride because he had the truck. Well, we're driving away. I said, hey, I'm going to ride with Joe today, and I quit. I really didn't think Juan would do that, you know, to be honest with you, because considering we're both at Buffalo, but he just had enough. So it was quite a shock to me that he actually did quit. With Juan quitting, Kelly's faced with a dilemma, to stay on at Buffalo or leave with her husband. A rainy day in Yellowknife. And Kelly is pondering a possible future without Buffalo. Looking at real estate in Alberta somewhere, or BC so I can start making payments on something so I can get the hell out of here. I want to get somewhere where we can have our farm again, because Juan and I were really happy when we did that. The uncertainty of things is weighing on her. I just don't like the unknown, and change is very hard for me. I've never dealt with it well, and it just worries me, and I can't sleep, and get all freaked out like an idiot. She's, she's not happy. She doesn't like change, and she doesn't. She fears that Joe's going to come down on her. Juan's concerned that Kelly will pay the price for his issues with Joe. You got a problem with me, you come to me. You know, don't be a bully and pick on a girl. I was really worried about how Joe would react to the whole thing, and I didn't know how he'd react to me, actually. It's not long before Joe surprises her in the cargo terminal. He's all worked up about one courier package not being delivered on time. Jack delivered it this morning. Yeah, why did it sit here for two days waiting for him then? I'll find out. Yeah, let's find out now. What are you guys doing here? I was just in a bad mood. And I kind of thought it was towards me and the Juan quitting and all this. That's why the, I, you know, I didn't really ask. He was just in a pissy mood. Yeah, fear was just in him. Mm-hmm. Not friendly. Nope. Just asked about that thing you delivered and why the f it didn't go uh, yesterday and went off and find out and stormed out and dragged. Kelly is the most loyal, energetic, caring person he's got in that company over there making that system run. If he starts to pick on her, she'll hit the fan. I've had too much turmoil in my life that I can't deal with shit like that. I, I get extremely extremely depressed and extremely worried and it's not good for me and if joe makes life difficult for her because of what happened with juan i'm sticking up for my husband and i'll walk the hell out of here i do not give a shit i put up with enough i work my ass off over here big decisions and lots to think about right now On the next episode of Ice Pilots and WT, an aviation gas shortage leaves Buffalo scrambling for fuel. They put a freeze on the gas for non-essential service. A failed bid puts Scott's North Pole flight in jeopardy. We got outbid by everybody. And Kelly makes a decision. There's no law that says you can't quit if things get shitty. 